For this second example, rather than giving you a complete method with the method header, I only gave you a fragment of code. So this is just another flavor I want to get, uh, get you to use, uh, get you to use to. So whenever you, you want to analyze the algorithm, it may not be the complete body of the algorithm. It might be just a particular part of the algorithm that you want to analyze about its time efficiency. So this is just uh, about one example, okay? And uh, rather than doing this actually from scratch, I think uh, you should really uh, try to do it by yourself since you already uh, got the detailed walkthrough of the example number one earlier. But I'll try to help you answer the critical questions so that you will be ready to really do it in quite a straightforward way. Let me now switch to iPad and let's now take a look. Okay, I got three critical questions for you, but I'm going to answer them one by one together. But I'll give you a chance to pause the video whenever possible. If you look at the fragment of code over here, it shouldn't take you too long to really figure out it is trying to do some very simple task. It has a Boolean variable called found empty string. And we also got some input array, presumably names uh, over here. So you can assume the following decoration. So we got string array names over here. And of course, the contents of the array depends on the individual test cases that we want to run on the algorithm. So we don't have to worry. Just uh, assume such decoration. And one thing to note, whenever you want to know about the size of a, an array, you got to say dot length without the parentheses, right? On the other hand, each element in the array, a index i, is actually a string. And in order to know the size of the string, you can look up the string API. You have to call the length method over here. So that's why you need this particular empty uh, brackets of parentheses, right? That's the uh, little syntactic uh, difference you have to note. All right, let's now uh, think about what this uh, method is gonna do. Well, it shouldn't take you long to really figure out exactly what it is supposed to do. If the names array contains any input string, or uh, any string that's actually empty, in that case, eventually you're going to set this Boolean variable to be true. Otherwise, if every string in the names array is actually non-empty, contains at least one character, in that case, this Boolean variable is going to remain false, right? You can uh, make sure you understand why it should be the case. If not, you can uh, get in touch with me. I'll help you understand the code. And also, you should really notice that we're using the ampersand ampersand in the state condition over here just to make sure as soon as we actually set the found empty string to be true, meaning that we found we have found at least one empty string in the input array. In that case, we're going to uh, set this to be true, meaning the explanation mark apply is going to be false. So that means we're going to exit from the loop right away, right? It's actually better practice than simply using the break statements. Whenever you want to uh, make sure you may have to uh, exit the loop uh, earlier whenever necessary, you better use a Boolean variable to do such uh, to do such purpose. All right. Let's now try to answer the three different questions over here. Question number one. How many times are we going to execute line number three, which is this particular state condition over here, right? It's just a Boolean condition. But how many times? In the worst case. Okay. In the worst case, it's going to be, uh, think about what well, in the worst case, Let's say we never actually get to set this uh, found empty string to be true. That would be the worst case. So that means we have to uh, run, we have to execute for every iteration from the left end to the right end of the array. In that case, this will always remain to be true. In that case, we have to look at this particular part of the Boolean condition, right? So that would actually uh, be very similar to how we analyze about i less than n. The only difference is the initial value for i was one, the second elements in the array. But now the initial value for i over here is actually zero, which would be the first element over here, right? That's the difference, okay? So that's something I want to put down for you. So you can think about the i value over here. Initially, it's simply zero, and then it's gonna go for one, and then two, and all the way to i when i is equal to the names dot length minus one. And that is also going to, in the final evaluation, dot length, okay? That's gonna be the value. So here I try to be very general because uh, the length of the names can be arbitrarily large or small, 
right? It can be zero, it can be 10, it can be a million, it can be anything. So that's why we, whenever we do such analysis, we want to be as abstract as possible, okay? And not surprisingly, we can still divide uh, these loop counters uh, value into two categories, okay? So this will be the first one. So this, uh, these will be the loop counter value where I strictly less than names the length is actually going to be true, all right? For example, in the case where names the length is actually 10, for example, in that case, what will be the value? It's going to be zero, one, two, all the way to 10 minus one, which will be nine. So zero all the way to nine, because uh, zero less than 10, true, all the way to nine less than 10 is also true, right? So hopefully uh, that's concrete enough for you. And uh, the other category is over here. When i is incremented up to names the length, in this case, this particular condition here, i strictly less than, I'll say ns for names, the length, is going to evaluate to false. So that will be the time to actually uh, exit, All right? And now having this, we actually got one and two already answered, right? Well, I should have let you pause the video. I beg your pardon. Anyway, so uh, it's good to always uh, give you an answer uh, as we actually uh, talk about the uh, uh, the steps. But you definitely uh, are encouraged to actually redo the example yourself and try to play with different initial values for the loop counter. That's something I will expect you to do. Okay, and let's try to answer the question here. What will be the worst case for the number of times line number three will be executed? It should include both the result for true and also false. So it's going to be from zero all the way until next the length. So that should be next the length plus one because initial value is actually zero, right? So that should be uh, next the length plus one. But if you really want, we can do uh, something similar to what we did earlier over here, right? What we did earlier here. Let's now do something similar. Next the length plus one, okay? Let me just annotate it. Names the length this many times is exactly from zero all the way until names the length minus one, right? There'll be uh, names the length, this will be the time where the condition evaluated true. And the only one time is going to evaluate to false is over here, right? So that's, that means overall is names the length my, uh, plus one. How many times will, uh, question number two, how many times will the loop body from line number four to line number eight be executed over here? Well, we just gotta subtract one because we are not gonna execute the body of the loop when it's actually evaluated to false, right? This part here, it controls the entrance into the loop. So that will be simply uh, just names that length. Okay, without the plus one, basically. All right, and the next one here is about how many primitive operation are there in the loop body over here, right? That's something I will expect you to really do your, uh, by yourself, but there's only one thing I would like to clarify in case you have doubts. What about the length over here? Apparently the length is a method call, right? The length over here is actually a method call. And should that be considered as a primitive operation or should that be considered as a non-primitive operation? First of all, the reason I'm asking you is because remember we said earlier, whenever you're trying to do a method call, it can be either case number one or case number two. You want to know which case it belongs to. But in this case, I can tell you, since we are only trying to figure out the size of the string, in that case, it's a cheap operation. We can assume, all right? So we can say in this case, a uh, primitive operation. In this case, specifically, a primitive operation. So you want to think about there are two things you're doing here. You're doing array indexing, and after that, you're trying to do the length method call, right? There are two things over here. And of course, you're also trying to, oh, I noticed a typo over here. This should be equals equals, right? I'll fix the slides as well. So this part here should be equal, equal, all right? Okay, so that's about enough just for you to really complete this exercise over here. But before you end the video, actually after you watch this video, before you go to the next one, I will highly recommend go over these two examples again and make sure you are able to 
uh, complete exercises from scratch on your own. All right, let's now move on.